Hey guys, how's it going? In case you didn't know, I am Alice and today I'm going to be letting you know what went down at the Air Max 97 slash one drop over this last weekend in Dublin. So what I'm going to do in this video is talk you through my experience of the drop. I went to all three shops that were offering the shoe. The reason why I wanted this shoe so bad is just because I love the design, the colours, the corduroy. My favourite Air Max sole is the Air Max 1 sole and I really do like the 97 upper, especially when it's presented like that in multicoloured corduroy. How can you not want that? But stay tuned to find out whether I did or did not end up getting them because oh my god, this drop was popular. So I guess we'll get going. We'll just start at the start where you always start. So on the 23rd, a shop in Dublin called Nowhere were having a pre-sale. They had said on their Instagram, no queues before 6 p.m. and that the pre-sale would start at 6.30, but they didn't say how they were going to do the pre-sale. So when I was thinking no queues before six and then pre-sale starts at 6.30, I just knew, I was like, no one is going to abide by that. So I wanted to get into town kind of early. So I got in at about half two and went straight to the shop, got lost on the way. I literally did a big round of it because I'd never been there before and I just went arse ways, but I ended up there. When I got there, I could see that there was no queue at the shop. But when I was walking around town, I could spot people, I was like, you want the shoe, you want the shoe, you want the shoe, you want the shoe. And we all were just suspiciously loitering around that street. So I was like that for a while and then I saw two guys walk by, they were both wearing Yeezys, one of them had Supreme. I was like, you're, you're here for the shoe as well. I asked the two lads when they walked by me, I was like, oh, what's the story, what's going on? And then we just started chatting for a while at this shop closed down shop that was beside nowhere. So we were just chatting for a while. And then I think people thought that we were starting a queue. Staff came out and they were like, seriously lads, no queues. So then we left and just went around the corner to a shop. I also saw a familiar face. Shout out to Alex Smith, the Smith View. But yeah, we waited around that corner then and another guy came over, we got talking. And then another guy came over and he was like, oh, are you guys queuing? And I've got a spot in the coffee shop right beside it where we can watch to make sure no one, you know, gets there before us. So we went to the coffee shop and we sat there for, I don't even know, maybe two hours or something like that. But while we were there, the Instagram for Nowhere put up a story saying that they were going to do a raffle. And this was kind of disappointing news for those of us who had been waiting around for a few hours already because you know you could come down literally at 6 p.m and you have a, as good a chance as anyone when i heard it was going to be a raffle i straight away was like right that's it i'm not getting the shoe i don't think i've ever won a raffle in my life ever but then when we were in the coffee shop a bird shit on my shoulder and at first i was like oh, the bird's after shitting on my shoulder and then one of the guys i was sitting with he was like hey that's good luck. And I was like, that is good luck. But at about half five, people were kind of building up around the shop. So at about half five, we decided to go over as well. And they were actually taking the shoes out and, you know, putting them on the windowsill. When the shoes came out, everyone was just getting so buzzed. Some people thought that the yellow wasn't as vibrant as they thought it was going to be. But even people who were saying that they were still like, it's, it's still an amazing shoe. They were lacing them up and there was something else going on. They were filming something. I asked one guy who said it was a documentary, but yeah, they were filming in the shop and then some guys were going in to take pictures and stuff, but the staff were walking around in the shoes and we were all just outside like, <sighs> and then one of the shop owners, I presume he's one of the owners, one of the staff, he had the Air Max on and he walked out the door, came onto the street, walked across the street. And I was just like, whoa, that was the first guy in Dublin to be walking around with that pair of shoes on. And it was just, ah, just the jealousy was 
so bad. <laughs> then the other staff member that was there started walking around in them. She laced them up, she did an interview and all. They were doing a size run from five to 11, I think, and they were doing half sizes as well. There was loads of lads and not as many girls, but then again, you don't know, lads can have small feet, but I thought that maybe I'd be at an advantage because I was looking for a size six. When I didn't know that it was gonna be a raffle, I thought that if I could get anywhere near the top of the queue, I might be okay because I'm a six. And they were saying that once you say your size, that's the size you're going for. And if it's gone, it's gone. You can't go for another size. So I was thinking, I'm a six. I might have a good chance here if it's first come, first served. But then when it was a raffle, I still thought that my odds would be better than someone going for a nine or something. But when it's just all down to chance, you don't know, you don't know what shoe sizes the lads have you don't know what size of the girls are going for so it was just a bit more nerve-wracking so somehow we ended up at the top of the queue and all of a sudden I turned around and there was just people all the way down the street it was mental when I heard the shoe was dropping in Dublin I thought maybe 50 60 people might be at it there was 300 people in the queue just at the pre-sale it was absolutely nuts. I had never seen so many expensive clothes. You don't have to be wearing expensive clothes to be stylish and I know all that, but it was just crazy to see it all in person. And it was just crazy that that was happening in Dublin and it was so cool to see. There were people there in the Nike Atmos and just all of these shoes that I didn't think I'd ever see in person really. And it was just mental. I was. I was really excited by it all. It was just a really, really cool experience to be able to see all those clothes. Because there was a queue of about 300 people, obviously this was attracting a lot of attention from people walking by and people were coming up to us and being like, what's going on, what are you queuing for? And we were like, shoes, and they just were like, shoes? But yeah, they just didn't get it. They were like, is it a special sale on? Oh, is the shop closing down? Do they have special offers? And we were just like, the very opposite, my friend, the very opposite. And so then they started splitting up raffle tickets into different bags. They had like a range of, I don't know how many, maybe like, for example, a size eight, they had tickets from 40 to 60, I don't know, in the bag. And then whoever wanted an eight had to pick out a ticket from there, get a stamp, and then they brought the bag back in and later on they drew one ticket and that was the person who was getting the shoe and they did that for every size so i went up for my size six and because i was at the top of the queue i couldn't really see how many other people were going for sixes but i went up and i put my hand in i think i was the first person to go for the six i put my hand in and took out a ticket and she didn't notice but i had taken it was like three tickets kind of stuck together. They hadn't really been split up or something. But when I took it out, I don't know what happened, but my brain was just like, say it. So I was like, I said to her, I was like, oh, I got three tickets there. If I had kept the three tickets, my chances would have been higher. But at the same time, I didn't want any bad karma here. So I just told her it was probably half seven by the time of the raffle, maybe around then. And so they came out and the girl picked one ticket out of the bag. She came out, shouted the number, the number traveled down and then the person who won got a bit of a cheer and went up and paid for their shoes. So they did this for every size. And when it came to the six, she came out the door, she said, size six, ticket number 99. And I was like, Ticket number 94. It's worse when you've seen them in person because you're like, whoa, I really, really want the shoes. And before going to the drop, I was like, ooh, 160 for a pair of shoes. Like, that's a lot. Like, am I sure I want to pay that? But when I was there, I was literally like, I'll pay 200, I'll pay 250 for these shoes. I don't care because you see them. And when you see 300 people in a queue for, for the shoe, you're just like, oh my god i want this and when people are getting them you look at them and you're like you're gonna be one of the very few people walking around here in those shoes i'll once again say that the reason i was buying these shoes was not because they were really hyped it was just that i have an interest in fashion and 
these shoes were just so cool and I just wanted them. But the hype definitely, definitely influences you in how much you want them and how much you're willing to spend for them. So they went through all of the sizes once and then came out and said, that's it, all the shoes are gone. So they had one pair to, to raffle off for each size that they had on offer. So it was about, I don't know, 10 or 12 pairs maybe available in nowhere. When the raffle ended, the guards came up and they were like, obviously because there's a crowd of 300 people, like Dublin is not used to this. And the guards came up and they said, what's going on here lads? And they were like, oh, it's a, it's a shoe raffle. And they were like, all right, okay, and just drove on. <laughs> so once the Nowhere raffle ended, I headed straight to Size. Size is another shop in Dublin and they were releasing the shoe the following morning at nine and it was first come, first served. So I went down, I wasn't planning on queuing because at this stage it was about 8 p.m. and I wasn't planning on queuing because they hadn't released anything about size information and I, I didn't even realize, to be honest, that there was gonna be camps for this shoe and I didn't have anything with me. But when I went down, there's people already in the queue. There was a guy and a girl at the start of the queue who had been there since six, I think, since the store closed. That was the time that you were allowed to start queuing at. And then I went further down the street to Offspring, which is in Brown Thomas and there were queues starting there as well. So I went back home to my apartment and entered a few raffles and went to bed. The next morning then I got up and I didn't really have any hope of getting the shoe, but I went into Dublin because I wanted to see what was happening. So the first place I went to was Offspring of Brown Thomas and they weren't really queuing. There was just kind of a group of people sitting outside the shop but it looked like a fairly big group so I didn't even want to try and attempt to join the end of it and then I went down to size and there really wasn't that many people there maybe 25 or something and again because I was looking for a size 6 I thought might as well chance it because maybe none of these people are looking for a 6 so I joined the end of that queue but then as it came up to nine o'clock some arguments started breaking out over a list size had posted that they weren't going to take any responsibility for a list but these two guys had a list that they had taken apparently at 2 p.m the day before but you weren't supposed to be queuing until the shop closed so there was all kind of arguments over that. There was a group on the left hand side of the shop that were saying they were all on the list since two o'clock yesterday and then there was the group that had actually waited the 12 hours. I don't know, I wasn't there all night so I don't really know what went on but it seemed like the people who were on the list were kind of coming and going and weren't kind of consistently queuing for the whole night like the people on the right hand side were. They had been there for 12 or 13 hours and the shop opened and they started selling shoes and the first three people that got them went straight to their car, didn't take the shoe out of the box. The fourth and fifth people that came out, I think they were the ones who took the shoe out of the box first and it was just cool. It was cool to see, but at the same time, it was really like depressing because I wasn't gonna get a pair. And then soon enough, after maybe 10 or 12 people, the shoe sold out. So yeah, it was disappointing again. But to be honest, I was most disappointed for the people who had waited 13 hours and didn't get a pair of shoes. The guy and girl that were at the top of the line when I came by at about 8 p.m. the night before, they didn't get a pair even though they had been top of the queue and had waited there the longest. So when they sold out in size, I ran down to Offspring just, just to see. And when I went down, they said that the shoe hadn't sold out yet. So it seemed that Offspring had the most stock they might have had 30 pairs or something like that. And so I went into the shop and I went straight to the queue, hopped in the on the back of the queue. And then I was only there for a little bit before they told me and maybe the four in front of me that all the tickets were gone and that there was no shoes left. The thing about these two shops though, afterwards, after I had queued, I went into both and asked and I was like, were you stocking size sixes? And they said, no, we started at a seven. So even if I had gotten the chance to get a seven, it wouldn't have been the right size. I just wanted to try anyway. And yeah, so basically there was one size six available in all of Dublin and I did not get it. So no, I didn't get the shoes. I didn't win any raffles, didn't get lucky 
and oh, I don't think I could pay 360 or whatever they're going for now. It's just, you want the shoe, but it's hard to justify that amount of money. One annoying thing was that people were coming out of the shops and trying to sell their pair straight away. I went down, after I was in size, I went down to Offspring and started talking to some guys outside of Brown Thomas just to ask if the shoe had been sold out. And one guy was like, no, they're not sold out yet. Do you want to buy mine? And I was like, how are you reselling already? And I was like, what size? He goes, 11. Do I look like a size 11 to you? And then when I was in the queue in Offspring, someone came down by the queue and the guy in front of me asked your man, was he selling his pair? And he was like, yeah, 400. Him and the girl he was with had both bought size eights presumably just to resell. I know this is not news, this is not gonna be news to anyone, this is this is the world of streetwear, but it's when you're in that situation and people are getting pairs ahead of you just to make a profit, it's just disheartening. So that was basically what went down at the Air Max 97 one drop in Dublin. If you wanna see more of that, I'll definitely try and get to more drops. If you would like to see less of the talking and more of just at the drops or interviews at the drops, stuff like that, let me know because I'd love to do it. I had such a good time doing it and I met really nice people so I'd definitely be eager to do it again. So if it is something you wanna see, let me know. I hope this video didn't ramble on for too long and I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff and you could have a look at some of my other videos and see if anything there takes your fancy and give that a watch. But that's all for now guys, I will catch you in the next one. A B on the track, yeah.